half the world going to the polls this year, including the United States, of course, of course, rather, Joe Biden in his early 80s, Donald Trump in his late 70s. Are they the two best candidates? Well, one of them is the best candidate. <laughs> yes, I do believe that. I mean, I think for President Biden, and once again, I'm a friend, I'm a fan, I've known the president for many, many, many years. Um, but all you have to do is look at his record and see where he has brought our country. And we have to remember, you know, he became president right after COVID, just like every other country in the world. Our unemployment was skyrocketing. Small businesses were closing, boarded up stores. Um, you'd walk anywhere in New York. There wouldn't be cars on the street. I'm, from, I'm a New Yorker. Um, and look what I would he's... never have guessed. <laughs> I'm very proud to be a New Yorker. Of course. Uh, and look what he's done now. Look at our unemployment rate. Look at wage growth. And wage growth, especially in the lower um, percentile. So people where it's the where usually it's the hardest to get wage growth. He has done that. Do we need to worry about his cognitive ability? No. He's been here five times, four since I've been here. I've spent much time with him. Uh, he has not only ability, but he has a sense of history. I've been in meetings with him, with his staff, with the White House staff, that's fantastic, by the way. But it's the president who's saying, no, I know that leader. I know what he cares about. I know what might will work. I know what our strategy should be. And you know, don't, and I think Jill Biden said this the other day, don't ever discount you know what, age can also bring you positives, it can bring you judgment, and it can bring you uh, knowledge of people. I mean, Biden, the president, knows every world leader. As a proud American, do you at any stage worry that the Oval Office may, in, to all intents and purposes, have to be turned into a prison cell if President Trump find him, finds himself in a position where he's at the wrong side of the law? Listen, I can't. I can't, I can't go there. It is a hypothetical. I do, I do have confidence in my country, and I do have confidence in the American people. Um, I think they'll make the right decision. Was President Trump right to threaten NATO? Oh, I think, as we've seen, NATO has brought peace to this world for the last 75 years. Uh, President Biden has made it clear his first trip to Europe was to NATO and how important this alliance is to us. And by the way, the alliance that's just growing stronger, we see with the addition of Sweden and Finland, um, and even the increase in funding from many countries. I mean, I think that we'll have probably two thirds of countries um, paying more than 2% of GDP very soon. Everybody knows how important it is. Um, so on that one, I would say no, he wasn't <laughs> right. <laughs> um, do you think the world would be a safer place or a less safe place with President Trump in charge? Well, listen, I don't, it's once again a hypothetical. It and is. I don't like commenting on that. But if, if you look at what President Biden has done in contrast to what President Trump may do, I mean, I don't know what he's going to do. I don't know him. Um, but support for Ukraine. You know, the U.S. has given $75 billion to Ukraine. Um, Jake Sullivan was just there yesterday. Our commitment is strong uh, and it's personal. President Biden cares about this. NATO, you just asked, another example. Our support for NATO, um, you know, and how important we think international cooperation, supporting democracy, supporting freedom. I don't know what the Trump administration will do, but I know that's what President Biden stands for. There is a sense just now among military um, analysts that I speak to on my program mm -hmm. almost daily, uh, saying the situation that we are finding ourselves in is almost comparable um, to the um, febrile atmosphere that we saw in the 1930s. Um, do you in any way feel that tension and anxiety as well on behalf not only of the British people but also of uh, people in the United States as well? Well, listen, I mean... <sighs> These are difficult days. I think you'd be naive not to say they're difficult days. We see a war in Ukraine, a Ukraine, you know, a strong democracy with brave people um, that was invaded by Russia in a brutal attack that's ongoing. Um, obviously, um, that, is, that is horrific, and we want to do everything we can to make sure Ukraine is still a strong democracy. Um, and that uh, Russia loses this war. It's not easy, obviously. We've seen what's happened. It's horrifying. 
um, what's happening in the Middle East and Gaza is also horrifying. Um, it was, you know, a in my view, a terrorist attack. Uh, Israel does have the right to defend itself, but humanitarian aid has to get in. That is one reason we are building a pier. Um, our boats are on our way there now. Uh, civilians need to be protected, um, and we should have, as we proposed in the UN uh, resolution, an immediate ceasefire tied to hostage release. What more, if anything, can the U.S. do? We believe Israel has a right to defend itself. They were attacked. It was a terrorist attack. But we believe how they do it is critically important. And that's why you see uh, Tony Blinken in the region as much as he is. And it's not just Tony Blinken. It's Tony Blinken. It's our head of CIA. It's Bill Burns. It's so many other of our diplomats. Um, because what we want in the end is a situation where Israel feels safe, where there is security, and where we can get to a two-state solution where uh, Palestine has economic growth, economic prosperity, hope for its young people. Um, and we have, you know, we have not done that well, frankly. Uh, uh, but Do you still think that Israel is acting within international law? I don't know enough about that. When you see the situation in Gaza and you see kids eating grass, soup, in order to try to survive, mm -hmm. what impact does that have on you as a mother? Well, it has a huge impact on me. I mean, it's, it's horrific, actually. No children should ever have to go through it. But that is why we have been pressing, and we've been very clear, including what we're doing at the UN right now, which is ceasefire immediately, release the hostages, humanitarian aid has to get in, which is, you know, we've, I don't know any other place in the world we've ever built a pier. That is not something that usually we advocate or do as quickly as we're doing. I think it shows how important we think the um, aid to, to civilians, especially children, and you know, all, all innocent civilians that, that need to eat. <laughs> the $60 billion that's being held up by House Republicans uh, for aid for uh, Ukraine in all forms, mm -hmm. um, how confident are you that it will get there? I'm optimistic as opposed to confident. I don't have any information that would uh, make me confident, but I do believe... Um, I do believe that in the Republican caucus, even though perhaps not everybody in the Republican caucus, there's a huge amount of support for Ukraine. Um, and a lot of the key committee people want this aid to get through. I think in my view, it has to happen. Um, I feel very strongly, I, I'm not, you know, I haven't dealt with uh, Capitol Hill in quite a long time. I used to deal with it often. Uh, this is a responsibility for the United States of America. Uh, and we owe this to Ukraine. Ukraine is bravely fighting um, and winning, actually, and winning. Um, and by the way, anybody who thinks that Russia may stop after this, I think is wrong. I mean, I was ambassador in 2014, and I saw what happened in Crimea, and um, I don't know why anybody would say, oh, this is it for Russia. So democracy, I think, is at stake. So we need to, we need to support Ukraine. Uh, President Putin has said that he was uh, hugely victorious in his election. Marina Litvinenko, who I'm sure you will know, said it's, you can't call it an election. It was an event. What would you call it? Huh. Well, I don't know enough about it, but looking at other U.S. I mean, at other Russian elections, I would say she might be right. <laughs> Talk to me about the royal family. Mm-hmm. Uh -huh. Um, News of Kate's edited photo made the White House news conference, which was... I didn't know oh, that. Yeah, it did. <laughs> yeah, it did, actually. Well, listen, I just... I, I want her to know that we are thinking about her, um, that we care deeply about her. We want her to feel better as soon as she can. And I think just uh, being an American, uh, Americans love the royal family. Apparently, uh, President Trump says he thinks that he might deport Harry um, if he becomes president. Um, what can I say? <laughs> I mean, I didn't hear that, but uh, it's not going to happen, though, is it? Well, it's not going to happen in the Biden administration. There we are. There we are. I've got some quick fire questions to end with. Okay. Is that okay? Yeah. Beach Boys or the Beatles? <laughs> Beatles. <laughs> Tea or coffee? Both. I have a cup of coffee in the morning because I need it to get up, and then I have English breakfast tea the rest of the day, and I don't put it in the microwave. <laughs> I'm glad to hear that. 
Obama or Clinton? Oh, that's too hard. Uh. <laughs> Churchill or Roosevelt? Uh, both were amazing. I mean, I'm an American, so I would have to say Roosevelt, but I have a huge portrait. It sh should tell you how I feel about Churchill. I have a huge portrait of Churchill behind my desk in my office. London or New York? Both, but that, but that is a good question because I consider myself a, a true blue New Yorker. Cotswolds or the Hamptons? Cotswolds. Great. And finally, Dynasty or Dallas? I didn't hear. Dynasty or Dallas? <laughs> Dynasty. There we go. There, <laughs> okay. That's why you did, because you say you're different to me. Man and Ambassador, it's a pleasure. Thank it's you a pleasure. Very much Thank, you. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Thanks Great so seeing much. you, as you always. Too. You too. <laughs>